is one more organ compartment that's very related to the digestion that I'm going to uh, put as the seventh and final structure. It may not necessarily be involved in digestion, but it's very closely related to digestion, and that is the liver. Here, we have to understand that the liver is found in a very, very strategic location. Right? It's a very strategic location where it's found, and that is between the intestines and the heart. Between the intestines and the heart. This means that they get, the liver gets a lot of blood, and it also gets a lot of whatever the intestines are responsible for, or doing, whatever the intestine's job is. And so, what you can basically summarize about the liver is the following. What you have are capillaries, which are just blood vessels, okay, that are good at keeping blood within them. The capillaries that are going to form from this small intestine are going to turn into turn into veins. Those are just larger blood vessels. A bunch of capillaries combining together will give you veins. And when a bunch of veins combine together, those will turn to something known as the hepatic portal vein. These are going to be, this is going to be a vein that directly goes to and vascularizes the liver. So, hepatic always refers to liver, the root word hep is always referring to liver, and this is going to be a large vein that goes to the liver. What it does is, it transports blood to the liver. Okay? But what we want to keep in mind is that as a blood transport mechanism, what we should look at is the blood that is being sent to the liver. Look at its components. This is why it's the strategic location that the liver has. Transports blood to the liver. It's between the intestines and the heart. So it gets a lot of the blood that's being pumped because it's close to the heart, and it also gets the specific blood that the intestines has just worked with. So this would mean that the blood that the intestines have just uh, absorbed and put nutrients into and have digested food and absorbed, reabsorbed it into the body, this is basically going to go straight to the liver first and foremost. This blood that's being sent via the hepatic portal vein to the liver from the small intestine, let's say, this blood has all the recently digested food. Has all recently digested and therefore slash absorbed food. The food that has been sort of mixed into the blood. All of the nutrients, therefore, that are first ever going to be available for the body post-digestion are going to be initially given to the liver. The liver gets first dibs in, in short. Liver gets first dibs. And, that's, and this is going to be important a little bit later as we'll see. Liver gets first dibs to the absorbed nutrients uh, from the intestines. Now, why does the liver get this right? The reason why is because the liver has the following functions. Let's take a look. There's a critical reason why we want the liver to be the first thing to get dibs to anything that was consumed, ingested, digested, and absorbed. So, let's take a look. First of all, the liver is going to be important because its job will include removing excess glucose that's going to come from the diet, remove excess glucose from the blood. So there's going to be this, these glucose molecules that have been broken down via digestion from an original carb structure, and now they're in the blood. The liver will take out whatever is extra and will store it as something that's very useful to us, a form of storage known as glycogen. Remember how we always state that the liver stores a lot of glycogen? This is because it gets first access to the blood that is full of glucose. That's as a result of all the digestion and uh, breaking down that just happened of the food. And so we're going to store it as glycogen if there's an extra amount of glucose within the blood. And the liver can sense this via hormones. In addition, this is going to be important. The liver can also be functioning in this conversion of nutrients into new substances. So what better place to put all of the nutrients that you've just made, that you've just I should say digested and absorbed and convert them into new substances. The liver is going to be a major site, for example, of, <clears throat> of protein synthesis. So you have these amino acids 
that are as a result of digestion and absorption into the blood that will then be synthesized into new proteins that the body needs. And also, for example, the liver will be involved in fat synthesis, synthesizing fats if, let's say, there's excess calories being taken in. So if you're taking in more calories than you're burning off, you have to do something with the fat that's being absorbed into the blood. You synthesize, therefore, fats that can be easily stored within what are known as adipocytes, fat cells. And finally, the last function, I think the most important thing that we should be thankful of our liver is the detox function and modification function that it has. And this is kind of why it has first dib, because it can detoxify and modify dangerous things. Now, how does it do this? Well, what we need to understand is that before the ingested substances, before the ingested substances, whatever you just ate, whatever you just put into your body, whatever you just drank, smoked, whatever it may have been, before those substances go anywhere else, go anywhere else within the body, the first place they always end up at after being going through the digestive tract is the liver. So what we notice is the things like alcohol, and I know I'm just trying to squeeze this in here, alcohol and drugs, two dangerous, toxic components, those things are going to be, before they go anywhere else, let's say to any other part of the body, they're going to be inactivated. The liver will have first dibs to the alcohol and drugs, and it will inactivate them, and hopefully also try to make sure that it connects itself to the kidneys and excreted this substance into the urine. So this makes a lot of sense when you drink a lot of alcohol, um, and that overall idea of alcohol being uh, involved at the liver makes sense as well, because now the liver is going to be constantly detoxifying alcohol if you're constantly drinking alcohol, and therefore you'll constantly be urinating as well. So that covers our complete look at the digestive pathway. Um, from this point forward, we'll conclude this lecture now by looking at specific digestion of different nutrients.